Good morning. Today on Spotlight, the latest update on a Spotlight interview we originally brought you in November of 2020 during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. At that time, we virtually sat down with iDetroit artist, photographer, and curator Marcus Lyon of London, England, and other local design and activist leaders. Lyon discussed his large, I mean really large, new book, A Human Atlas of an American City. Well, fast forward to today. Now he has unleashed a new podcast called Intersections Detroit, a Human Atlas podcast. It's a 10 episode series of a very diverse mix of Detroiters talking about the city they love through their own unique lens. Marcus Lyon and producer Latoya Cross will join me to give you a sneak peek inside their latest work. And later on our Sunday morning program, we remember three outstanding Detroit leaders who left us recently, as well as another Michigander who recently received a high honor posthumously. It's Sunday, July the 23rd. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. Joining me now is Marcus Lyon and Latoya Cross. And good seeing you both again. Uh, first time meeting you, but last time I interviewed you, it was during the midst of the pandemic and it was Zoom and you were actually across the pond over in England at that particular point. So good to have you here in person. Uh, I'm gonna start with you, Marcus. You've got something now called Intersections Detroit, a human atlas podcast. Uh, but that is sort of an addendum to what we talked about the first time I interviewed you, and that was this humongous book that we'll show on the screen uh, with lots of Detroiters, great photography because you're a photographer by profession and an artist, uh, but it was their stories about this city that we know and we love called Detroit. Marcus Lyon. I'm going to begin with you. What in the world possessed you to put together a book that if I pick it up, I get a hernia, and if I throw it at someone, they get a concussion? <laughs> well, I, I was asked by a group of amazing Detroiters to tell your story in, in a passionate and authentic way. And let's face it, Chuck, it's a big story, so we needed a big book. All right. Very good. Very good. Um, uh, where'd the idea come from? And then you enlisted the partners, uh, some of who are with us here today. But tell us where this all came about and, and why you did it. So we create human atlases, Chuck. And what we do is we bring together 100 extraordinary change agents who are nominated to be part of our projects. And then we tell their stories through photography, DNA and sound. And we build an image activated app that swipes over the portraits and then the portraits actually talk back to you and tell you their own story. So we built this in response to what we feel is a world where we're listening to a lot of shouty people and we really need to slow down. We need to listen. We need to see those in our communities who are really doing the heroic work in the neighborhoods and doing the deep work to heal our societies and to create a more hopeful future. So the I Detroit book is, uh, is a book that honors a hundred of, of your um, most inspirational sisters and brothers in the city of Detroit. But this is a continuation, but in a different form? Yes, sir. We felt that the stories were so deep, the oral histories we created with the I Detroit project, that there was this incredible opportunity to tell an even more expansive narrative about your extraordinary city. All right, and so coming up with this podcast idea, this was your brainchild? It was. I mean, when you create something like this, you collaborate, you build a team. So there's so many people who have helped make this a reality. But uh, the initial vision to put this work into a podcast form was mine. But really the idea was to have a, a dissemination of the voice of the city that was totally democratic. And the beauty of the podcast format is it's free to entry for anyone. As long as you've got access to the internet, you can listen to this story. And that's very attractive for us to be able to tell this story in a much deeper way. I never liked the analogy of Detroit being this ghost town. I never liked it. Because I would come home and I would see all my people. 
my people live here. I moved to New York and I went all over the world. When I came home, my people were still here. My family is here. So how do you talk about a city like it's disappeared? And what does what does Detroit sound like? Right here would have given it to me anyway because oh, look here, look here, girl. I know the boy. She did baby too. I know the man that had no kids. That's how they need that man. We love very hard because we've had to fight. <laughs> we've had to fight for this love, you know. Uh, and everyone don't love us because they don't know us. And it's not, you know, this mushy kind of love. Like, it's not a romantic love. It's a gritty love. I, I got your back, you know, kind of love for life. Yeah, it's a, I got your back love. This is Intersections Detroit. Resilience and hustle from the heart of the D. Follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find great stories. artist and a photographer, uh, but he needs some people to help him out to pull this off. Uh, and that's where you come in, Latoya Cross. Uh, you have a background in production and uh, you used to work at WDET. Um, and you produced this. What did it take and what did you, what was your goal in wow. taking this brainchild of his and making it work in a podcast format? Yeah, well, um, Marcus for One has amazing concept amazing vision overall so coming in to do the the podcast form um, I was looking for heart I was looking for authenticity for truth and um, for vulnerability you know because this city is one where I, I, I like to refer to it as the rumbles and rainbows <laughs> okay you know and we get a lot of that and so um, from the first time just going through all of the audio um, listening to we're being taken to live in noise, we're being taken to, to front porches and we're hearing the cadences in people's voices. Um, I was just looking for that, that entry of, of truth and, and honesty and heart. And it was delivered, the first line was the Tory says, that's what community is, watching people's rhythm. That set the tone for, for the full out podcast vision. Yeah. How do you, uh, and I ask this uh, as a little bit of a devil's advocate, advocate because there are a lot of podcasts out yeah. here. How do you cut through the noise? How do you distinguish yours from all the ones that are out there, which has become pretty popular yeah. now. You hear everybody say, hey, I'm gonna do a podcast. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I've listened to yours and it's very good, but, yeah. but, but how do you distinguish yourself from others so they seek you out? Mm. Well, this one, because it's an extension of such a phenomenal um, projects in the beginning with the I Detroit book. This one right here is we're focused on the listening aspect. So where what we mean by that is how immersive it is with the sound, with the atmosphere sound, with the music. Local um, musicians we have F.A. Best, Marcus Elliott bringing in music um, from Detroit, and then also that breathing space so that everything is not we're talking at you, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking, but we're allowing you to let these stories and these voices to sink in you and to stay with you. And we allow that breath, you know, whether it's through music or very subtle, subtle sounds. Right, right. All right, Marcus Latoya, let's take a quick little break. We'll hurry right back with some more insight into this uniquely Detroit project. You said something that I read not too long ago. You said, I've never worked anywhere that has had such a misrepresented narrative. What do you mean by that? I think Detroit is such a misunderstood city. Uh, it's such an incredibly important story about the urban narrative of America. And the reality is, I think, the majority of outsiders, they come here, they have a preconceived idea of what they're going to find here. And then they go and look for the things that back up that story. Mm -hmm. And when oftentimes we, it's a stereotype about yeah. Detroit that gets exploded once we get people here. But if they haven't been here before, they fall into some of these negative stereotypes mm -hmm. that they've heard about Detroit. 
Exactly. And, and Chuck, what I was looking for was to tell the true narrative of the city through the voices of its most important brothers and sisters. How did you, from I know the original, how did you find all these different people and select them? Because it's a really diverse uh, field of Detroiters. That's so true. Famous well, and not so famous. Exactly, and we try and cover that full gamut. But the way we construct these projects is to say that we are not the experts. We're the portal. The Human Atlas team is the portal within which a story can be told. But we come to the cities and we build these extensive nomination processes where the people of the city nominate the 100 people who feature in our work. So we believe that that's the most authentic way of showing up in a city, in a space. I mean, we've done these human atlases now in Brazil, Germany. We've just launched Decoded in Silicon Valley, and we're working with the Getty Museum now down in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. We need to have permission to do this work. And we create permission by building nomination from the people of the city. They nominate their people. They know the work. They know what's going on here. I don't. Sure. Latoya Cross. Ten episodes? Yes. So we refer to them as chapters because we really want people to enter it as, um, as, as kind of a book. You can go in through any chapter, but you'll get that full story. We have Jessica Caramore narrating each chapter, which really brings you in to, um, to the themes. Mm -hmm. And so with this, we wanted to make sure that we covered, and we, a lot of them, we have like one word uh, themes as well because we wanted it short but impactful. So we have life, we have the people, we have service, um, vision, faith, um, uh, art, word, where we talk about literacy and you get amazing stories there from uh, Elijah Craft, Elijah, Elijah Kraft, who um, just really talks about how, and before he went to a program called Beyond Basics, you know, how reading was such a challenge for him and the way that that kind of held him back just in you know just in social and social elements as well and so um we, we just wanted to give that space to to breathe 10 chapters you can enter it you know chapter five and go on or you can go from one to ten you know in order and um funded by the kresge foundation our good uh, friends in collaboration with the charles h wright yes. museum of african-american history the institution in this town uh, 100 voices uh, in a five-year project? Five-year project. Yeah. Been a, a huge that's a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I always say I came here as another and, and I left as a brother. I'm always happy to be in the D. This, this is a very, truly special city. Final question, and both of you can answer it. Uh, uh, have to be quickly because we're running tight on time. But we'd be safe to say this is, although it's a podcast, it's audio. Uh, it's a love letter to Detroit. Mm. It is. It's definitely my love letter to Detroit. Obviously, it's been built on the back of loads of work by Latoya and Jessica Caremore, Brian Eno, and the musicians who've supported us. But um, yeah, it is. It's my love letter to this incredible city of yours, Chuck. Right. Is this the first podcast you've done? It, it was. Will it, it be the it, last, or, I don't or did they it, wipe it, you out from this? <laughs> no, it was a very immersive and extensive project, but no, this is definitely not the last. <laughs> we have so much work in store. All right, you, you We're been, already talking about the next one. All right, you've been bitten by the bug. Yes, right. <laughs> absolutely. Latoya Cross, Marcus Lyon, thank you so much for coming in. And uh, uh, anytime you come to Detroit, let us know. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. All thank right, you. It's for, our pleasure. And best of luck with the podcast. Uh, it is available, um, all 10 episodes, and so seek it out, and I think you'll enjoy it. Marcus and Latoya, good talking to you today on Spotlight, and best of luck, and we'll stay in touch with you. And coming up, remembering three very special Detroiters. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Today we remember three dynamic Detroiters who gave everything they had to the Motor City. Downtown developer Robert Gregory, activist Joanne Watson, and Academy Award winning producer Sue Marks. A look back at their amazing accomplishments. Tonight, the city of Detroit is mourning the loss of pastor and former city council member Joanne Watson. She's being remembered as a people person and a freedom fighter who had an uncompromising way of speaking truth to power. 
Watson was born and raised in Detroit and served on the city council for a decade starting in 2003. She was also the first woman to serve as executive director of the Detroit NAACP. The organization's president, Reverend Dr. Wendell Anthony, knew her since the fourth grade and shared his thoughts with us tonight. She stood up and she was not compromising her principles when it came to putting people first. And so that's what I remember about it. That's what I'll carry with me. That's what I hope that the people will carry about her. Um, she's gone, but she will never, ever be forgotten. There's no word yet on the cause of death, but we're told she had been ill. Joanne Watson was 72 years old. You've been involved with Detroit for so long, mm -hmm. and particularly downtown, so you've watched the changes, you've watched the growth. Um, how much and how fast is it changing from what it was, say, 10 years ago? It, it is accelerating, the momentum is there, and, I, and you're right, I've been down here for a long time, and uh, I never thought in my lifetime we would see a D Detroit coming back like this downtown. And it's really a combination of, you know, we, we think we're leading with the public spaces and activating these things, and we started with Campus Marshes in 2004, mm -hmm. and we just keep investing, the Downtown Detroit Partnership keeps investing, thanks to our partners and our sponsors, but, you know, we believe we lead with the public spaces, making downtown look beautiful, having these places for people, things to do, and, and again, it's daytime, nighttime, weekends, and, you know, wintertime we have the ice rink, summertime we've got the fountain, we've got the beach, and Beacon Park now is open attracting millions of people there too. So uh, the public spaces are really leading the transformation of downtown and we were asked all over the country to come and speak on this Chuck and in Detroit is actually we're fortunate we got some beautiful spaces. Absolutely. Um, what I've noticed is the diversity down here mm -hmm. and I know that's something that doesn't just happen. Yeah. Uh, it's a concerted effort by the programming and how you design things to make sure that you're reaching out to all sectors of Metro Detroit. Absolutely and that's a pillar of the DDP in terms of diversity and inclusion and the programming we do it's every space we're programming now we're, we're in seven spaces now wow. which is a lot yeah. and the programming is very each one of them is unique in its own way but it is diverse and I think you see the results that are, are the people that are showing up here and and it's everybody all walks of life every color race and creed and age and it's something we continually engage the community. We have a lot of community stakeholder meetings, with community engagement meetings, and we get that feedback. We monitor the social media, and we see what really works. And so it's, it's a pillar of what we do. Young at heart, Sue Marks and Pamela Kong producers. And the winner is... Young at heart, Sue Marks and Pamela Kong producers. To the Academy, who said yes, and who loved our film as much as we loved bringing it to you. Well, from Hollywood, hooray for Michigan. <laughs> we did something right. <laughs> Thank you. Our condolences to the families and friends of Bob Gregory, Joanne Watson, and Sue Marks. And coming up, a special tribute to the late U.S. Senator from Michigan, Carl Levin. Last month, the U.S. Navy paid tribute to Michigan's longest serving senator by commissioning the USS Carl M. Levin guided missile destroyer in Baltimore, Maryland. A fitting tribute to the man who started his political career on the Detroit City Council and finished it representing the entire state of Michigan from 1979 to 2015, 36 years total in the U.S. Senate. He served as chairman and ranking member of the Senate Committee on Armed Services during that career. Senator Levin passed away on July 29th, 2021. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to historic Baltimore, Maryland and the commission of USS Carl M. Levin, DDG-120. I'm Commander Jason Holbrook, the ship's executive officer. It is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. Ladies and gentlemen, Rabbi Reznikoff will now deliver the invocation. O oh God, who bits the mighty ocean deep, its own appointed limits keep, 
We stand in awe of the seas that reflect your creation and of the handiwork of the men and women, civilian and military alike, responsible for this proud and mighty ship, but united celebrate today's commissioning of the USS Carl M. Levin, our Navy's nation's newest ship. Welcome Secretary Del Toro, distinguished guests, honorable members of the USS Carl Levin's crew and fellow citizens. On behalf of the city of Baltimore and Mayor Brandon M. Scott, it is my distinct privilege to extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to all of you as we gather here today to celebrate the commissioning of the USS Carl Levin. This mighty vessel will carry forward the torch of Baltimore's naval legacy. On a day like this, at a moment like this, I'm just gonna say good morning, shipmates. It's good to be here with you on this historic day. Senator Levin lived a life of service with integrity, and his example inspires us as we commission this ship and this crew today. Thank you, Admiral Gilday, for the introduction and for, more importantly, your superlative leadership of our Department to the Navy. I, uh, before I begin my formal comments, let me uh, again thank Senator Levin's daughters, Laura, Kate, and Erica, for serving as the sponsors of their father's name ship, the USS Carl Levin DDG-120. We are indeed honored that you are here with us today and that you will forever be the connection between the ship, her crew, and your father. And as a special thank you to Senator Levin's wife, Barbara, for your presence here this morning. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro. Sir, I would be honored if you would now place Carl M. Levin in commission. Commander, place Carl S. Levin in commission. Yes, sir. On behalf of the President of the United States, I hereby place United States ship Carl M. Levin in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. <laughs> Officers and crew of the USS Carl M. Levin, man our ship and bring her to life. Thanks to my guests this week, and don't forget a summertime favor, the Orchard Lake Fine Arts Festival next Saturday and Sunday in West Bloomfield. I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the spotlight. We hope you have a great week. Thank you.